For 16 years, Kenyan farmers have not been able to export their animals to Saudi Arabia. It is a major market for live animals. This has meant that many farmers have been forced to sell locally. But that is about to change after the Middle Eastern country lifted the ban. So how are Kenyan farmers readying themselves up to take up this opportunity? And are the issues that led to the ban been addressed? Let's find out. I need money and so I have to sell my animals. John Mashati is a small-scale farmer in Old Posimoru, a small village near the Kenya-Tanzania border. He has come to the market hoping to sell his sheep, but prices are so bad and is unable to sell. Today I came with 35 sheep. I haven't sold even one up to now. I am about to head back home because business is bad. His sheep are part of a consignment that will be exported. Thousands of farmers, just like him, who sell their animals in local markets, are hopeful that prices will improve with increased demand for livestock due to the resumption of live animal exports. Local cooperatives are supporting such farmers, offering them training on animal health and sourcing for markets. Um, we also help our members to improve their livestock uh, by crossbreeding with uh, improved breeds. Salama Sena. Wilson Rakwa, a rancher, has taken a more commercial approach to the trade. He buys cattle, fattens them before selling. These cows are for business. I bought them in March. I feed them for four to five months. When they add weight, I will sell them in a market. If I get a market beforehand, I will sell them directly from the farm. In January 2021, Kenya resumed exporting livestock to Oman, the first Middle Eastern country to lift the ban. The consignment had more than 40,000 animals. But the country has the potential to export more than half a million animals annually. Many farmers cannot export directly and must rely on middlemen. This is because exporters must follow strict export rules and need a lot of money and animals to be in the business. <laughs> Judy Wanja is an exporter who buys animals from local farmers across the country, providing an important link to the market outside the country. What does the process of exporting live animals entail? First of all, to the two countries have to have a no objection. They both have to have the set of rules that they both agree with. Oman needs to say, this is the, our minimum take home, this is our minimum requirement. The animals should not have X, Y, Z diseases. The animals should not have this kind of skin. The animals should have eaten this kind of food and should be of this kind of weight by the time we are taking. And on this other side, DVS, which is Director of Veterinary Services, Kabete, has to come and say that, yes, we've attained the following standards, and so we are ready to engage and export. When we started, of course, it was a bit tough, but now with time, even the, the suppliers that we have and the farmers that we have are adapting to the standards that are required. Uh, worldwide for the live export. As an exporter on my end, there are two factors, two ways to look at it. It's the aggregation of the animals, first of all, and it's just the quality control of what goes out, you know, to the client. Eventually, it would move more from the sourcing to the production. Is there enough stock here to meet the demand that is in the market? Is it enough? It's yes and no. I believe it's an $11 billion economy in, in Kenya on its own. A few times there is a glut, but in terms of what you call quality meat that goes out for export, a quality, an animal that has attained all the quality standards and controls, we don't have much. Now that Oman has come knocking, so now there are inquiries from all over. We have Saudi Arabia, we have Jordan, we have every other country that would want to partake. But then again, if they do start partaking, that will jeopardize the now the controls. It will jeopardize the quality because then the people will now concentrate on selling and not producing the right animal for the specific market. What are the issues that led to the ban and have those issues been addressed? I wouldn't say that the issues have been resolved 100%. However, we are not where we were. We are not near where we were. As we speak now, the government has set up a laboratory in Mariakani. So all specimens are taken. The government is producing its own vaccines. It's all produced here, so it is very organic to the animal. So for now, would we say that everything is, is well? It is not, but I would not 
at all shun the government because they've done so much to ensure that we are participating in the world market. Our meat is AAA rated, but hardly felt, hardly seen, hardly heard. Just how big is the potential for this market? The future is bright. This is simply for the small holder farmer who for a long time has not known what to do with their livestock, has not seen the value of vaccinating their, their livestock, has not seen the value of, of having a veterinary on the ground and paying them all the time. But livestock does pay, farming does pay. After the animals are collected, they are transported to feedlots such as this one in Voi in coastal Kenya, where they are ready for export. Here we do dipping and so that uh, all the parasites are, uh, are taken away. Then uh, we do tagging. Also, we weigh the animals uh, to see the, their weight when they are coming. And then we take them to the pens, give them the feeds, then observe them um, for almost a week to see whether they are gaining. If they are not gaining, then we see what's the, the reason as to why they are not gaining. Most states lifted the ban apart from Qatar, which was worried about Kenya's outdated livestock traceability system. This is because Kenya lacks a modern and efficient system to track and trace animals. According to the Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization, the country's livestock sector accounts for 30% of the total agricultural products. This is about 10% of the national economic output. This could be higher if imports take off. The livestock uh, banned by uh, imports of uh, live animals from Kenya by Saudi Arabia indeed affected us. There was an outbreak of Rift Valley fever, which is an advisable disease under the World Animal Health Organization. The effect is that for that period when we were undertaking the vaccination programs, then uh, it affected us from exporting animals to the Gulf countries. The system to track and trace animals was outdated and ineffective. Is there uh, a system now that has been put in place to ensure that then that can be done? We undertook uh, amendments of our regulations to allow for livestock identification and traceability system. So this has now been put in place so that we're able to identify if there's an outbreak of disease, we know that this is the county that uh, the outbreak has been declared. So that traceability system helps us to continue trading as opposed to having an entire ban of goods, I mean, live animals or life or products of animals from the, the whole country. What are you doing as government to increase uh, and to source for new markets so that uh, these products that we are speaking about can reach new markets? We want, first of all, to satisfy the the, the Middle East market because it's a huge market for us and therefore now we're able to export to the Gulf countries uh, that's the uh, Sultanate of Oman, uh, Kuwait, big 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 importer uh, Kuwait and we are now seeing Qatar we still have some challenges. What is the government doing to create uh, registered producer associations for them not to rely on middlemen? in our livestock uh, bill that uh, was submitted to parliament is that uh, we made a provision for formation of the livestock producer organizations uh, within the every, every county where they are supposed to be registered. Now the purpose of that was basically to bring these farmers uh, uh, together so that they're able to produce, we're able to ascertain that uh, the quantity of animals they have is this much because we want to have continuity. Registering these farmers will mean that uh, farmers will now be engaged and capacity built and even taken through um, the livestock production systems that is required uh, as per the trade agreements that we have with the other countries. But this is not an open door opportunity for the country. Kenya's exports face a stiff competition from South Africa which tops the list of live animal exports in Africa, followed by Cote d'Ivoire, Mozambique, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and Botswana. The lifting of the ban by Middle Eastern countries has the potential to change the fortunes of Kenyan farmers. But experts believe more needs to be done if that dream is to be actualized. Farmers should really take advantage of those vaccines and uh, ensure, ensure that the animals are always adequately uh, vaccinated. It's high time we, our farmers started uh, storing feeds so that uh, we can ensure that we always have adequate feed 
for our animals and we have good quality animals always. Making sure that our farmers and other actors in the livestock uh, value chain are well informed about uh, the demand, first of all, in Saudi Arabia and also uh, the quality and safety requirements so that by meeting all of those, our product can be exported to the Saudi market, which is actually more lucrative. The government should set up a track and a trace system. This consignment is now ready and on its way. The big question is, how many more will follow? Hopes are high that the Middle East can be a major market for Kenya. But the people here acknowledge that if that's to happen, there's still a long way to go.